We've spent three weeks in this state, and I thought, why not make it a full month? On the last episode, I introduced you to the highly proclaimed Tennessee Aquarium, showing off its first couple galleries of the river journey. And I didn't think it'd be fair to move on with that, including the saltwater side of things at building number two, the ocean journey. If you'd like to know more about each complex, its history, and how we'll explore each building, click on the card above. Because it's time to kick things off with our tour through the Tennessee Aquarium's Tropical Cove. A 10,000 square foot human environment that opened with the ocean journey back in 2005, but has since received several upgrades in recent years. It's divided up into three sections with just five habitats and 22 signed animals, including some you wouldn't expect to see in the building. More, of course, will be explained as we move along, so let's start at the very beginning. In order to reach our tropical dream vacation spot, you must first go up two escalators to the top floor, which is known as Level 4, giving a nice view of the Ocean Journey's sister building along the way. Before you even reach the highest level, the forest wall is in view. The entrance begins to the left under a fallen tree, and you can immediately feel the blissful heat. Welcome to the Lemur Forest. Added in 2017, shutting down 80% of the Tropical Cove, they turned this corner from this into this. Within the treetops, I spotted the endangered red rough lemurs, but their home is actually a backdrop to an already existing exhibit. A nearly floor level freshwater pond settled right in front. Its most notable resident, is the striking Tiger River Stingray. But both of these habitats continue on. That corner covered the rainforest side of Madagascar, but during the renovation, they turned this once hyacinth macaw home into Madagascar's spiny forest, both of which connect via transfer chute over the entrance. This side on this day was home to ring-tailed lemurs and the not-to-be-forgotten ground-dwelling radiated tortoises. You might ask, what are lemurs doing in an aquarium? Well, reading straight from their website, one of the things that has defined the Tennessee Aquarium during its 25-year history and helped it to stand out from other aquariums is its focus on showcasing all forms of life, both above and below the water. Incorporating lemurs into an already diverse collection that helps make an even more convincing case in support of the aquarium's core principle, that water, connects all life. Moving on to the very center of this 30-foot tall greenhouse, the Stingray Bay. The Ocean Journey's only human to animal interactive station and the largest touch tank at the entire aquarium. With the lemur forest, the Stingray Bay too got a facelift. Here's what it used to look like. More natural, right? But the intricate rock work was removed to allow more swimming space for the animals. They lowered the overall height and thinned the barrier to make it more accessible to children. The single tank is home to, I believe, 13 species, including tropical fish, small sharks, horseshoe crabs, and six kinds of rays, with Atlantic and Southern stingrays being the most popular. I don't know how many gallons it holds, but I do know that it has a perimeter of nearly 100 feet and its oddly varied shape was designed to allow you to stand and interact from every outer vantage point. And the third and last section is the Butterfly Garden, a 2,500 square foot separate walkthrough room containing, well, a lot of butterflies. Species though, I don't know. But what I can say is compared to the other two, it's a very peaceful conclusion to the Tropical Cove. Thank you for joining me through this quick introduction to the ocean journey. Next time we're in this building, we'll be working our way down to the Antarctic Peninsula.